Okay, so the first thing to do, I would suggest, is just to take the air fault out of the way. So it's that part there, it's that part there. Okay, I've already loosened everything, but I'm just forming it through. Take that pipe out of the way. Then you've got these two bolts that actually holds uh, part of the thing down. And don't forget your breather pipe, just remove. And then there's two lugs at the back, just lift them, and the whole filter comes out of the way. So to remove the reservoir bottle, there is a size 10 head bolt there, which you basically take out of the way. Okay, there we go. Six more, 10 head bolt. Okay, tab on that on that section, you'll just push and you'll pull that up. Be careful with these pipes because these pipes are molded pipes, they're plastic. You know, and when they do get old, they do get a little brittle. Okay, so don't forget to put a receptacle underneath, okay, because the water will be leaking out to a certain degree. So what I normally do with this uh, bottle, okay, so we'll blank off the pipe, we block off the pipe with, with a long nose pliers, vice grip, and then we'll just basically pull that pipe off like that, okay, and once that pipe is off, um, you know, you'll have your, you'll have your bottle up, you'll have your bottle out of the way. The next thing I normally do, I just take this um, power steering reservoir, it just pulls up, up like that, it's got little rubber, rubber grommets, okay, that fit uh, inside over here, and just lay that out of the way, okay, it just gives you a little more space to work here, okay. So we have these, um, uh, you know, these uh, round balls here, which we basically, where the air filter fits onto, okay, the grommets clip into, a uh, size 15 spanner, and when we'll just simply loosen that out of the way, okay, it's and that's what those look like, okay, they just but basically, they have a, a thread in there. So the next thing I would do is to take the tappet cover off, okay but here's a clip over here where my finger is okay it's just a, a, um, a cam sensor which you basically unplug okay you'll just basically push push that down okay and when you push that down the clip you can just pull the clip off okay we'll get that out of the way and then of course we'll take out the spot wires we'll take them out okay um, just sort of pull them out and then unfortunately we do need to remove the coil here yeah? because the coil is in the way okay so to remove the coil you need a 15 um, torx bit okay there are four bolts here okay on the sides um, they are about that long okay you can see it's a torx head and then all that we do is don't unplug it Okay, I don't think it's necessary. We can just take the coil and move the coil out of the way. It can just basically lay one side. So, to remove the tappet cover, there's just a series of size 8 head bolts. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and loosen it and get back to you when I'm done. So, here is also a bracket here, okay, that it's bolted on with uh, two bolts, one at the bottom and one uh, at the top where I'm loosening it now. I've got the bottom one out ready okay it's a 10 head okay um, and it's actually 10 more bolt what these bracket what this bracket is used for because it's got an ear and a ear on it you can put a hook in here um, when you need to remove the engine with the engine crane all the bolts you've got them all loose it's got uh, eight heads here are three important ones in front okay there's one in the middle there's one on here at the one corner and one here where my finger is on that corner. You have to remove them because they go into the tappet cover. And then once those bolts are out, you can just simply lift the tappet cover out of the way, like that. Okay? And that basically exposes um, the camshafts and so forth. So we need to take this cover off so that we can expose the crankshaft pulley. So we have two screws like this I've loosened the one in front already okay and I'm taking this one out now once the screws are, 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 are taken out that's what they look like okay if you can if you can maybe just see it on the camera there okay that's what they look like there's two of them once we have them off okay you just pull this pipe away from this uh, plate 
and then this cover can just get taken out of the way and there we will now expose our crankshaft pulley okay now I don't know if you guys know this but these fan belts on this car there is no adjustment to take these fan belts off so basically you just have to use a screwdriver and roll the crank and roll the engine to get them off okay I'm not gonna cover that in this video because uh, it's going the video is going to be too long so I'm going to put, show that to you in another video okay so when we have that cover off and we have the fan belts off okay if we just get look here where the CV joint the inner CV joint is okay there is a little grub screw there it's actually like more like a blanking plug it is a size 10 okay I've loosened it already we basically have to take that out why do we have to do that we have to do that because the um, we have a spe we have a special tool here which we need um, you know to uh, set the cam the crankshaft pulley on top dead center because inside the motor okay um, there are uh, journals okay and the journals are specially designed can you see that that is basically just a, a, a blanking plug okay it is just a blanking plug I'll show you now what the toolkit consists of that we need to do this uh, um, uh, cam belt and also which part of that kit we actually use you know to lock up the uh, top dead center on the crankshaft right so this is a kit which I use when I do these cam belts okay now for this particular vehicle that we are using we need two of these little components here let me just take out what we need we need this little black one here okay it's got the size 10 head on the back over here. Now remember that screw, that, 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 that bolt that we took out, the blanking bolt uh, by the CV joint. Okay, we're going to replace that bolt with this. Now it's got a long shaft and this will basically catch on the crankshaft and keep it at top dead center. This bar over here, we slide into the two cams on top. Okay, so this locks the cams in position. But I'll show you how to do it all now. So we'll be turning that bolt, you know, that, that special tool, we'll be turning it in all the way, okay. Um, I'm just go ahead and um, I'll turn it because the camera is in the way, I need to get my hand in there. So I'm going to turn it in and get back to you once I've got it. Okay, so with it turned in all the way, that should now lock the crankshaft journal. So I'm going to turn the camshaft, uh, the, the crankshaft quickly, the pulley, size 18, and you can hear that. Can you hear? Okay, so that's locking up against that shaft now, because that shaft is pretty long, it goes in pretty deep. Okay, and uh, basically, you know, uh, if I turn it back, I turn it forward, you can see it's locking. Okay, so now we need to loosen up this bolt here. Okay, this is a size, um, size 18 bolt. It's a special bolt. And I always suggest, uh, you know, when you do this job, replace this bolt. Okay, don't use the same bolt because it is a stretch bolt. So we need to loosen that. So how are we going to lock the engine now? Because now we're going to turn the engine in the opposite direction to loosen that. So what I've discovered is, you know, when you go down the, down the, 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 the shaft here, you will come to the gearbox, you know, where the shaft goes into the gearbox. Can you see it exposes some, some of the teeth there? Okay. So what I would do here, uh, put a screwdriver in there. Okay, I'll show you now. I'm going to take a screwdriver and stick it in there to lock that teeth up so that I can loosen up the, 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 uh, the crank bolt. Okay, so you can see with that screwdriver locked in there now, okay, we'll come to the pulley now and you'll find that the pulley, you can now loosen the pulley up, okay. All right, so I've loosened the pulley up now. I can turn this bolt out all the way. I can take the front uh, pulley off now. Now, as you can see, with the uh, front pulley off now, we can actually take off the rest of the covers. Okay, the top and the bottom covers, all size eight bolts. So I will get back to you as soon as I've got that off. So the four designers of this engine, 
in their infinite wisdom, had decided that you cannot take the front cover off without taking the water pump pulley off. Okay? So, you have to remove the water pump pulley, four size 10 bolts. So with all the bolts loose, we can just push the top cover loose, take the bottom cover off. Just another tip, what I do is, because we've got the pulley off here now, we got, well I take the bolt and I take an old nut as a spacer. Okay, and I put it in there, so that we can just turn this and make sure that it's locking onto top dead center. That's top dead center. So now we got to go and make sure that our cams are in, in, in the proper position. We can now take the bar and we can set the bar into the cam slots. Okay, so that we know that the cam is in the right position. We're locking those cams. Those cams now cannot turn. Okay, both of them. Now we need to remove the engine mounting okay we need to get the engine mounting out of the way okay so we'll take the size 15 tube socket okay get these three loose loosened up here remember now you need to put a jack under the engine okay so that the engine doesn't drop so we loosen this up and then down at the bottom here there are three also size 15 okay so with those six bolts taken out, we can now take this engine mounting completely out of the way. So we have to take that bracket off. One, two, three bolts there, or two bolts there, and two in the front over here. So these two bolts <laughs> has to be taken out. So these two bolts actually holds the alternator, the top of the alternator, onto the cylinder or onto that bracket that we need to remove. Okay, so basically it's a Torx, it's a Torx head there, so you take the old stud out, okay, don't leave the stud in, otherwise you can't move the, you can't, you can't move that bracket out of the way. That bracket, I've taken the two bolts uh, loose uh, down, down there, okay, they size 13 heads, um, that is what they look like, okay, the two that goes, that holds the bracket on in the front, and then you have to take these two off. It's, it's fairly simple, but I mean it's labor intensive, you know, they could have designed it a lot easier. You know, this is one of the most difficult, not difficult, but labor intensive uh, can belts to replace, you know. So, uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe their design was because they want people to bring the car to them, to the dealership, okay and not encourage them to <laughs> do it themselves or take it somewhere else whatever the reason may be I'm not a fan of it so you can just pry the, the alternator now okay away from the engine okay so that we can now take that bracket and lift the bracket out of the way can you see how this uh, power steering unit is gotten in the way okay that's why I said loosen up that power steering unit so now we can take the bracket as you can see the bracket together as you can see the bracket together with the front cover okay comes off that way so remember now that we have the crankshaft locked at top dead center at the bottom we have the plate in place on the cam okay so now we can go ahead and we can take off the tensioner okay so we can go ahead and remove the tensioner okay it's a size 13 bolt we'll just loosen it all the way all right so we can now take the tensioner out that's what it looks like okay and the belt will be all loose we can get the belt to come off and we can put the new belt uh, back on and with a new tensioner so we have the new tensioner what we do is we leave that pin in, okay? That pin we will uh, take out once we got the belt routed. Okay, let's take you down there. If you're looking at where the tensioner fits, where my finger is, okay? There is a, use a pointer here, there is an indent there. Can you see that, that, that hole? 
Okay, that hole. Now that little uh, protrusion on your your uh, tensioner, the protrusion on your tensioner, okay, marked with a blue dot, that's got to go. Basically, it's got to sit in in that in that in that hole there. Okay. Now when you have that in the hole there, you're basically in the right position, and then you've got to you've got to get your bolt in and thread it. Okay. I don't know if you can see that, it's very difficult to film because you know we have very confined spaces here. But then once you've got that into position, then you can just sort of tighten up your tensioner. Yeah? Make sure that that stays in that, in, in that hole, that it stays in that position because that's where you want it. Okay, and then you tighten, once you've tightened up your tensioner, okay, your tensioner will basically be um, properly uh, in the proper position and then you know once we've got the cam belt on we just pull the pin and that and the tensioner gives the right tension to the belt so we have our brand new belt what we will do is we'll route it we'll start at the crankshaft okay we'll get it nicely we'll get it nicely on the on the uh, the crankshaft um, gear and remember with when it when it goes on the crankshaft gear the crankshaft gear is completely loose okay it's not tight because remember that it's a taper and you know it's still got to be tightened um, you know once you put the new bolt in and you tighten it up and then it will basically lock that that gear into position so it will be loose so don't panic about that but the crankshaft itself is locked and topped at center. So with the cam belt fitted now, you'll have the play on the tensioner side. Okay. So now what we'll do, we'll pull that pin, okay, and you see what happened? Okay, no more play now. Okay, it's got the right tension. Okay, so now we've still got top dead center, okay, on the crankshaft. We have got um the locking plate in position at the back okay so now what we have to do is we basically have to put on the front covers again so that we can lock up the the bottom pulley okay remember that that gear at the bottom is loose okay it's not locked the only way we're gonna lock it is when we put the new the pulley on with a new bolt and then we're going to tighten it I'll give you the torque setting for that okay and then we're gonna tighten it and then that will basically lock the gear to the pulley. Okay, so when the pulley turns, the gear will turn with the pulley. Okay, and the engine will remain timed. Okay, so let's go and do that. We'll get the, 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 the top and the bottom covers fitted quickly. So, I put the front cover on. Okay, I put the uh, mounting back. Okay, tightened all the bolts. I put the bottom cover on as well. And now we are going to put on the pulley with a new bolt so just make sure that the crank is locked up against the, that that shaft that top dead center uh, bolt that we've put in okay and how I do that I take out all the spark plugs okay um, so that the engine can turn very freely the crank at least I'll put a rag over there and I'll just take a water pump pliers okay and I'll turn it backwards a little bit and forward until you hear the knock can you hear the knock? Okay, so that's locked up against, that is definitely top dead center. So now we can put that pulley on and tighten the bolt. So we'll just tighten, we'll tighten the bolt, okay, by hand all the way in as far as we can. All right, so we'll just tighten it with a, a size 18 socket and a ratchet there. Okay, we'll just basically turn it against, you know, and then uh, remember it is locked there but I don't want to bend that pin so we're going to put in our um, our old screwdriver okay into the flywheel wheel and then I'm gonna get the torque settings and I'm gonna take a torque wrench and give and torque this bolt up do the final torque and torque on it and then we have to go to the top we have to remove the that uh, uh, plate okay or that bar that is keeping the cams timed then we need to turn this engine two revolutions 
and then check the timing again. See if we can get that bar fitted in and see if we can get that onto top dead center with, a, with, with, with our stopper here, you know, with our special tool. Just to make sure that everything is timed 100%. So once you've tightened your pulley to the specified specification, which I will give to you in the description below, you will now remove your uh, stopper, you know, uh, that is preventing the engine from turning at the bottom here. You remember you stuck it in over there into the flywheel. Okay. All right, so we have to remove our locking tool here. Okay, just get it loosened with the spanner and then it should come out quite easily by hand. Okay, once we have that out, uh, we'll be able to turn the engine pretty pretty freely pretty easily. We can take this plate out uh, once more Okay uh, So I've made some marks with some tipex. Okay one on the engine one on the crank uh, pulley So I'm going to turn it Okay one revolution make sure that the engine turns nice and easy and freely eh? Okay, that it's not uh, touching the valves or so. That's the second revolution. I bring it back to where I started now We'll go to the top and now our plate should fit in there pretty easily, okay? Um, as you can see, I could just push it in by hand. So I am now convinced, okay, that this engine is timed properly, okay? So basically that proves that this engine is timed perfectly, okay? We can now take this, uh, 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 we can take this plate out uh, once more, okay? Um, I can take out that uh, uh, um, crankshaft aligning tool at the bottom. I can put the original um, blanking plug back and I can just, you know, put the tappet cover back, put the, the water bottle back, you know, and um, basically the cam uh, belt and tensioner job is done. Right, so the engine is running nicely, no misfires, you know, no noises on the engine. Uh, all that I need to do now, I need to put the air filter back, okay? So that is how you do a cam belt and a cam belt tensioner on a uh, Ford Figo 1.4, okay? Just a, just a quick note on the condition of this belt. See that? Those cracks, okay? They were... <laughs> this belt would have broken. And this guy is going to take a long trip. Okay, he's gonna travel a couple of thousand kilometers over the holidays and uh, that would have spelled big trouble on the road 